Come out of hiding, you're safe here with me. There's no need to cover what I already see. And you've got your reasons, but I hold your And you've been on lockdown, but I hold the key. Hello from Heartland, New Brunswick. And this is a town that has the largest covered bridge in the world. As my husband says, on the planet. It's the longest covered bridge, with a little prompting from the gallery. Uh, yes, we're so happy. Every morning we can look out our window and see this longest covered bridge. And uh, so we're kind of privileged that way. It's a quarter of a mile long, so that's pretty long. But I hope you're having a good day, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So, and I do hope that uh, you're reading your Bibles this new year and new beginnings. If you haven't been in a habit of doing it, I hope that you do form this good habit of getting alone with God in the mornings and reading his word and letting it bless your heart and lift you up and strengthen you for the day. Then the morning is really good. If you can get up a little earlier to do it, I would say do it. Doesn't hurt to lose a little sleep once in a while for something so special and life enriching. So we're going to begin reading today in John chapter 3, verse 16. And I like to go into verse 17 for a good reason. I'll tell you in a minute, but this is what it says, and you probably have it memorized uh, already, but for God, and this is, you have to understand this, this is Jesus quoting this, so it makes it special. It's in red letters in my Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the next verse is so rich, I have to include it. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's such, these are powerful words coming from the Lord himself. And uh, of God's love for us, he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. He paid the sin debt or us that we could never pay on the cross at Calvary. A debt that we could never pay. He was the sacrifice for our sins. And now we want to turn to Mark chapter 16. And we're going to read verse 15. And he said unto them, this is Jesus saying unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, this is the part I want to focus on, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These are people like us, he's talking about, the Lord is talking about, who will be able to do these things. And I want to share with you a story today of someone I knew. I didn't know her, um, you know, I was much younger than she was. This is Dora Myers. She was a missionary. She became a missionary to India. And she was in her older years when I met her. And uh, she lived close to where we were living at the time. She was in her 80s, a dear woman. And I'd like to share a little bit of her story of how God used her and some of the things that happened in her life. Uh, she... She did obey that call when God called her. She was in her 50s. She was teaching at Lee College and had a comfortable life. But she felt that call. And she said she even had a dream. It was either a dream or a vision 
of India and that she was to go there. And this is a woman who, when she was younger and became a Christian, she knew she needed to be baptized in water to follow Jesus. He was baptized by John. And she knew she needed to do that as well to, to just proclaim that she was going to be a follower of him and do what he did, follow in his steps. And so, but the thoughts, when it came time for her to be baptized, the thoughts of putting her head under water just terrified her. So she told us that she had to practice in her bathtub, putting her head under water so that she could finally get baptized. And because we think and know that Christ was put all the way under the water, so that's what we practice. And uh, so Dora had to do that. Then when she was called, uh, at first the World Missions Department didn't send single women to a foreign land and support them. Uh, but somehow they must have realized that she had a true call of God. There was no reason to hold her back, even though she was in her 50s from fulfilling this call. And so they began to support her in her efforts there. Well, she went to India, and when she got there, uh, it was a different lifestyle, of course. At that time, this was quite a few years ago, she had a mat that she had to sleep on, and on the floor, and I don't know what kind of a situation that was where she was living, but it was probably pretty, you know, not too modern. So she had to, in sleeping, she had to put DDT powder around that mat and a net over her whole being uh, to keep tarantulas, scorpions, spiders, mosquitoes, any whatever could have crawled on her in the night. She had to protect herself with that powder going around her mat when she slept, imagine that. But she didn't complain about it. It was something she just had to do and she did it. And so then when she, they had an outdoor shower, I can imagine it was not too modern as well. And she went in there one day and there was a big poisonous snake hanging from like the top of the shower. But she wasn't harmed and he it didn't bite her. Uh, I'm sure she met other things that if she were here, she could tell some experiences that were quite unique to her call. But another thing that happened that really impressed me was that the men in the village didn't like it that she had come. And so they came to her days later and they said, they were kind of big eyed talking to her. They confessed that they had put enough strychnine in her well to kill 10 elephants. That's the way they put it. And when she didn't die, they, were, they came and confessed to her what they had done. I, don't know, I wish I knew the outcome of that, whether those men became believers. I believe they did, but these are the kind of things she encountered while there. Her, one of her missions was, was to spread the gospel message, but also to uh, help the women and the girls to be, have more education. So she started a girls' school. In fact, before she left, she had started three girls' schools, uh, or probably schools. We'll say schools because probably the boys were not turned away if they wanted to be you know, under her tutelage. But it, it, she, she led a fascinating life. There is a side note to all of this. In the beginning of her life, there was a young man who, let's see where I have this in here, because I don't want to get this wrong, and I, I can remember it, but when she was younger, she had met a man named Norman. He was a budding artist, and he loved her, and he asked her to marry him. And so she must have mentioned it to her father, that he was asking her to marry him. And the father, he forbid her to marry him, said that he would never amount to anything. And so they didn't get married because she was in that day, you, if your father didn't give you permission, you just weren't gonna do it. It would have been unheard of back then. But eventually I have to add, this young man became a famous artist and his name is Norman Rockwell. But you know what? God had a bigger plan for her life. And, uh, and she, had, she had a very fulfilling life, pointing souls to Calvary and a brighter tomorrow. And so um, 
but another thing you might want to consider, if you ever see Norman Rockwell's paintings, Dora had red hair, and quite a few of the women that he would paint in his artwork were redheads. And there's one in particular that comes to mind that kind of resembles Dora. It's the one where there's a man standing on the outside of a huge portrait of a woman with her jewels or whatever it was she had on. And she's looking back at him as he's, the painter is doing the work, the artwork from the outside. It's a unique picture. It's one Norman Rockwell's. And I think that kind of represents Dora a little bit back in the day. We want to follow the Lord. That's the whole gist of this today. We want to follow Jesus. We want to pay whatever it costs to just sacrifice what we think we might need to do, but live for him. It's the best way to go. It's the best way to live life to the full because our souls never die. Our soul will live on and on. And so we, we know we will spend eternity somewhere and we want it to be in heaven with the other family members of ours who have gone on ahead of us, who are waiting for us on the other side. And it's not bleak uh, to even consider these things because we'll all face it one day. So we want to be prepared in this life to be ready to go and uh, to follow the Lord, to repent of all of our sins and to live for him all the rest of our days. God might never call you to go to a foreign field, but wherever you are, you do what you can and uh, share the love of the Lord with those around you and you'll be blessed. I need to make a correction on last week's video. I said that we went to Newfoundland uh, and that we started in Port Basque, Nova Scotia and landed in Port Basque, um, Newfoundland. Well, it was Sydney, Nova Scotia, and we did land in Port Basque, Newfoundland. And, but I have to give you a little more details on that. When we got to the other side, the relatives there were so happy and glad to see us. And they gave us the grandest welcoming you could ever imagine. And uh, we had a lot of fun adventures with them. It was like an exciting, adventurous time. Uh, they were so happy and just, we were so glad to meet people like that who were so happy and seemed so glad to see us. And after dinner, we had had moose stew, which I have to say, I'm not a game hunter, uh, type a connoisseur, but I'll tell you what, that moose stew was good, it was delicious. After dinner, they would go into the, uh, their living room, pick up their musical instruments, and they would begin to play all these songs. And one of them was like, Eyes the Bi that catches the fish and brings them home to Liza. And what happy songs they played and sang. We had the best time. But there was one part that kind of made, took me back a bit. They said, in order to be honorary Newfoundlanders, we had to kiss the cod fish. And I'm thinking, what? I could just picture this fish and having to kiss its lips. And I'm thinking, oh, awful. <laughs> and they said that uh, we had to have a sample of their Newfie screech. Well, I've never had a, well, anyway, I'm not gonna go there, but um, so it, they let us off the hook, but after a lot of laughs, we just laughed about it because we could hardly believe this whole thing, you know, but it was such fun. Uh, I believe from there, for them, if they had stuck a frozen cod in my face, I probably would have kissed his lips just because they were such dear people and they were so happy and it was so contagious, we loved it. So uh, we were thankfully spared of that initiation right. And uh, I hope you all have a good day and a blessed day, a happy day. And I hope that you're a blessing to somebody. And if you'll wait to the end of this video, my granddaughter, Sandra Lynott, is going, her, one of her songs that she's sung is going to be played. And I believe you'll enjoy it. Be blessed and enjoy living for Jesus. Have a good day. Come out of hiding, you're safe here with me There's no need to cover what I already see And you've got your reasons, but I hold your peace And you've been on lockdown, but I 
Cause I loved you before You knew it was love And I saw it all Till I chose the cross And you were the one That I was thinking of When I rose from the grave Now rid of your shackles My victory's yours I tore the veil For you to come close There's no reason Run.